Hello students, good morning. Now we are going to see the lesson chemical bonding in second volume unit 10. This we already studied. Now we are going to see the uh, topic over, um, overlapping. Okay, that is That is orbital overlap. Okay. With atom, when atoms are combined to form a covalent molecule, the atomic orbitals of the combining atoms overlap to form a covalent bond. The bond pair of the electron will occupy the overlapped region of the orbital. Depending upon the nature of the overlap, we can classify the uh, covalent bonding into two types that is uh, sigma bond and pi bond. Okay. First one, we are going to see the sigma bond. When two atomic orbitals overlap linearly along the axis, the resultant bond is called as sigma bond. Okay, the overlap is also called head-on overlap or the axial overlap. When two orbitals overlap sideways, the resultant covalent bond gives the pi bond. When we consider x-axis as molecule, molecular axis, then Py and Py and Px and Px overlap will result in the formation of a pi bond. The following explanation will give you the clear understanding first the formation of hydrogen molecule and it's a formula and its electronic configuration only one during the formation of h2 molecule one s orbital of two hydrogen atom containing one unpaired electron with the opposite spins they overlap each other and along the internuclear axis the overlap is called as ss overlap such an axial overlap results in the formation of a sigma bond, sigma covalent bond. That, uh, that only given here in this picture. Next, we are going to see the fluoride, uh, fluorine molecule. The valence shell electronic configuration of fluorine atom is 2s2, 2p2, 2, uh, 2px2, 2py2, and 2pz1. The half-filled pz orbital of the two fluorine atoms overlap along the z axis, and a sigma covalent bond is formed between them. And this overlap only given here. And here the two p orbitals are uh, overlapping, so this is called as pp overlapping. Next is formation of hydrogen fluoride molecule. The electronic uh, configuration of hydrogen atom is 1s2. Uh, so 1s1 and the valence co electron configuration of fluorine atom is 2s2, 2px2, 2py2 and 2pz1. When the half-filled s orbital of hydrogen linearly overlap with the half-filled 2pz orbital of a fluorine and you will get a sigma covalent bond that is formed between the hydrogen and fluorine. So this is called as sp overlapping. Next is formation of Oxygen molecule. The outermost configuration of the valence shell configuration of oxygen is 2s2, 2px2, 2py1, and 2pz1. The oxygen configuration is given here. When the half filled pz orbital of two oxygen overlap in the z axis, that is considered the molecule such as the z axis, the covalent bond is formed between them. Other two half filled py orbitals of uh, oxygen atoms overlap laterally that is uh, sideways so you will get the pi covalent bond formation of the oxygen thus in oxygen molecule the oxygen atoms are connected by two covalent bonds that is double bond out of those two the one is the sigma bond and another one is the pi bond that that only given in this picture next we are going to see the hybridization Bonding in a simple molecule such as hydrogen and fluorine can easily explain on the basis of overlap of the respective atoms orbitals, atomic orbitals of the combining atom, but the observed properties of the polyatomic molecules such as methane, ammonia, beryllium chloride that cannot be explained on the basis of this simple overlap of the atomic orbital. For example, it was um, experimentally proved that the methane has the tetrahedral structure 
the four CH bonds are equivalent. This fact cannot be explained on the basis of the overlap of the atomic orbital. And we can uh, go ahead with the new concept that is called as hybridization. In order to explain this observed fact, Linnaeus Pauling, he proposed the balance atomic orbital in the molecular in the molecules are different from those in the isolated atoms and we and I introduced a new concept that is hybridization. Hybridization is a process of mixing the atomic orbitals and form the new orbitals with the same with the comparable energy and it gives the equal number of the new orbitals with the new equivalent bonds of the same energy. The resultant orbitals are hybridized orbitals and they possess maximum symmetry and also they have the definite variation in space so as to minimize the force of repulsion between the electrons. Now we are going to see the type of hybridization and the geometry. First, we are going to see sp hybridization. Consider the bond formation in the beryllium chloride. The ground state, the valential electron of a beryllium atom is helium with the 2s2 and 2p and uh, 2s2 and uh, 2p0. So, you have 2s alone, you have two electrons and 2p, x, y, z all are empty. And if it is excited state, one of the s orbital is shifted to the 2p. So, you will get the sp hybridization. In beryllium chloride, beryllium and chlorine bonds are equal and it was observed that the molecule is linear. And BB theory explained the observed behavior by sp hybridization. One of the paired electrons in the 2s orbital gets excited to 2p electron and the electronic configuration is given here like a 2s1 and 2p x1. Now, 2s and 2p orbitals are hybrids and they produce a new equivalent sp hybridized orbital which have 50 percentage s character and 50 percentage of p character these sp hybridized orbitals are oriented in the opposite direction that only given in this picture okay next we are going to see the another one that is sp2 hybridization that is uh, consider the bond formation in the fluorine tri boron trifluoride the ground state of the valence electron uh, of the configuration is boron atom is helium with the 2s2 and a 2p1 the boron number is 5 so in ground state we have 2s2 and 2p x1 but in the excited state one of the s orbital is shifted to the 2p so we will get the configurations 2s1 2p x1 and 2p y1 okay now we have uh, the, now we have three uh, single atoms, that is half filled atoms are there and they are ready to form three covalent bonds with the fluorine atom. The three unpaired electrons are required. To achieve this, one of the paired electron in the 2s is uh, promoted to the 2p y orbital. So in boron, the s orbital and the 2p orbital, that is p x and p y in the valence shell hybrids to generate the three equivalent sp2 uh, sp3 hybridization orbital that is uh, shown here and these three orbitals uh, is the same xy plane and the angle between the two orbitals is equal to 120 degree next is uh, the overlap of uh, two sp 2p z orbitals of uh, fluorine the 2p the sp2 hybridized uh, orbital of boron now overlap with the 2p z orbital of uh, fluorine that is the three atoms, the overlap takes place along the axis that only given here. And so, the, this hybridization is sp2 hybridization. Next is sp3 hybridization. And it can explain by considering the methane as an example. In methane molecule, the central carbon atom has a uh, four hydrogen atom and the ground state in the valence, uh, valence electrons, the configuration of carbon is helium with uh, 2s2 and 2px1 and 2py1, 2pz is 0. And the excited state, one of the s orbital is shifted to 2pz. In order to form a four covalent bonds with the four hydrogen atom, one of the paired electron in 2s orbital of carbon is promoted to 2pz orbital in the excited uh, state. The one 2s orbital and the three 2p orbitals of a carbon mix to give a four equivalent sp3 hybridized orbitals. The angle between them is 
hundred and nine degree and twenty eight minutes, and the overlap of oneness of the hybridized uh, hybridized carbon. This oneness orbital of a four hydrogen atoms overlap linearly with four sp3 hybridized orbitals of carbon to form four ch sigma bond in methane molecule. That only given here, and the uh, shape of this one is tetrahedral. Now we are going to see sp3 dehydrization in a molecule such as a PCl5, and the uh, central atom phosphorus is covalently bonded to five chlorine atom here the atomic orbital of phosphorus undergo sp3 dehydrization which involves its 3s orbital three 3p orbitals and one vacant 3d orbitals in the ground state of the electronic configuration of phosphorus its configuration is neon 3s2 3p x1 3p y1 and 3p z1 that only given in this one and one of the paired electron in the 3s orbital of the phosphorus is promoted to one of its vacant orbital that is a 3d in the excited state the one 3s orbital and the three 3p orbitals and one 3d orbitals those are all combined together and you will get the five equivalent sp3 hybridized orbitals the orbital geometry is sp3 hybridized orbital and it is a trigonal bipyramidal that only given here next overlap of the 3p is it the the 3p is it of the five chlorine atoms linearly overlap along the axis with the five sp3 d orbitals of phosphorus to form five pcl sigma bond that only uh, given in this picture next we are going to see sp3 d2 hybridization in sulfur hexafluoride that is sf6 the central atom sulfur is extended to octet configuration and it undergoes sp3 d2 hybridized orbitals which accounts for five six covalent sf bonds the ground state of the configuration of sulfur is neon with uh, 3s2 3p uh, 3p x2 3p y1 and 3p z1 that only given here one electron of each one electron from the 3s orbital and the 3p orbital of sulfur is promoted to its vacant 3d orbital in the excited stage so totally six you have the six valency orbitals from sulfur one is a 3s and a 3 or 3p orbitals and uh, another two are 3d orbitals it mixes to give six equivalent sp3 d2 hybridized orbital this orbital geometry is octahedral that only given here and the overlap with this three with this um, six hybridized sp3 d2 hybridized orbitals of a sulfur it overlaps with the 3p z orbital of the six fluorine atoms to form the Yes, F sigma bond and it is so we will get the uh, sulfur hexafluoride that only given in this picture. Okay, next we are go going to see the bonding in ethylene. This is very important. The bonding in ethylene can be explained using the hybridization concept. The molecular formula of uh, ethene or ethylene is C2H4. The valence of uh, valency of uh, carbon is four. The electronic configuration of valence shell of carbon is in the ground state is helium uh, configuration with a two s two, two p x one, two p y one, and two p z zero. To satisfy the four valency of the carbon, one of the two s orbital, one of the two s electron is uh, promoted to two p z orbital in the excited state. That only given here. In ethylene, both the carbon atoms undergoes sp2 hybridization involving 2s, 2px, and 2p, uh, 2py orbitals, resulting three covalent sp2 hybridized orbitals lying the xy plane at an angle of 120 degree to each other. The unhybridized 2p z orbital lies perpendicular to the xy axis. Formation of sigma bond. One of the sp2 sp2 hybridized uh, orbital of uh, each carbon lying in the molecule axis that is x-axis linearly overlap with the with each other, resulting in the formation of a carbon-carbon sigma bond. Other two sp2 hybridized orbitals of both carbon linearly overlap with the four oneness orbital of a four hydrogen atom, leading to the formation of 
two CH sigma bond on each other. That only given here in this uh, for in this uh, picture. Now we are going to see the bonding in ethylene. The bonding in ethylene can be explained using the hybridization concept. The two molecular uh, molecular formula of ethylene is C2H2. The valence of carbon is four. The electronic configuration of valence electron of the uh, carbon in ground state is 2s2, 2px1, 2py1, and 2pz0. To satisfy the valency of carbon, promote an electron from 2s to the 2pz orbital in the existing uh, state. In ethylene, both the uh, carbons atoms and undergoes sp2 hybridization involving 2s, 2p, and 2p, uh, 2px and 2py orbital, resulting the three equivalent sp2 hybridized orbitals resulting we have the three sp2 and the bond angle is 120 to each other the unhybridized 2p orbital lies perpendicular to the xy plane then formation of sigma bond one of the sp2 hybridized orbital of each carbon lying on the molecular axis that is x axis and linearly overlap with each other resulting in the formation of carbon carbon sigma bond other two sp2 hybridized orbitals of both the carbon linearly overlap with the 4 1s orbital of a 4 hydrogen atom leading to the formation of 2 ch sigma bond on each carbon next we are going to see the pi bond the unhybridized 2p z orbital of both the carbon atom can overlap sideways uh, as they are not in the molecular axis this lateral overlap result in the formation of a pi bond between the two carbon atom that only given in this picture next we have seen the bonding of acetylene Similar to ethylene, the bonding in the acetylene can also explain by using the hybridization concept. The molecular formula of acetylene is C2H2. The electronic configuration of the valence is a helium with the 2s2, 2px, 2py1, and 2p is at zero. To satisfy the valency of the carbon, it promotes one of the electron from 1s to 2p, that is in the excited state. In acetylene molecule, both the carbon are in sp hybridized state. So 2s and 2px orbital resulting in two equivalent sp hybridized orbital lying in the straight line along the molecular axis, that is x-axis. The hand hybridized 2px and 2pz orbitals lie perpendicular to the molecular axis. Formation of sigma bond. One of the two sp hybridized orbital of each carbon linearly overlap with the each other, resulting in the formation of CC sigma bond. The other sp hybridized orbitals of both uh, carbon atoms linearly overlap with the two s two a one s orbital of two hydrogen, leading the uh, leading the formation of CH sigma bond of each carbon. Then formation of pi bond. The unhybridized 2pz and 2py orbitals of the each carbon overlap sideways. This lateral overlap results in the formation of two pi bonds, that is py and py and pz and pz between the two carbon atoms that only given here. So out of those three bonds, here you have carbon carbon, two pi bonds are there and carbon hydrogen is the sigma bond. Okay, next we are going to see the molecular orbital theory lewis concept and the valence band theory qualitatively explain the chemical bonding and the molecular structure both approaches are inadequate to describe the some of the observed properties of the molecules for example these uh, theories predict that oxygen is diamagnetic however it was observed that the oxygen in the liquid form was attracted towards the poles of the strong magnet indicating that is paramagnetic as both these theories treated the bond formation in terms of electron paths and hence they failed to explain the bonding of the nature of paramagnetic molecules f hand and robert s robert and yes, Mulliken developed a bonding theory that is called the molecular orbital theory, with the, which explains the magnetic behavior of the molecules. The salient features of the MOT, that is molecular theory, when atoms combine to form the molecules, 
they they are individual atomic orbitals lost their identity and they form the new orbitals that is called the molecular orbitals the shape of these molecular orbitals depends upon the shape of the combining orbitals and the third point is the number of molecular orbitals formed in the, is the same as the number of combining atomic orbitals half of the number of the molecular orbital formed will have the lower energy than the corresponding atomic orbital while the remaining molecular orbitals will have the uh, higher energy the molecular orbital with the lower energy is called the bonding molecular orbital the one which is having the higher energy is called the anti bonding molecular orbital the bonding molecular orbitals are represented as sigma bond pi bond and a delta and the corresponding anti bonding orbitals are denoted as sigma star pi star and del delta star the electrons in a molecule are accommodated in the newly formed molecular orbitals the filling of electron in these orbitals follows the alpha principle pauli's exclusion as well as the hans rule as in the case of the filling in the same orbital bond order gives the number of covalent bonds between the two combining atoms the bond order of a molecule can be calculated using the following equation bond order is equal to nb minus na divided by 2 here nb is the total number of electrons present in the bonding molecular orbitals and na is the total number of electrons present in the anti bonding molecular orbitals and a a bond order of the zero value indicates that the molecule does not exist if you get the bond order as zero that molecule will not be there then a linear combination of atomic orbitals the wave functions of the for the molecular orbitals can be obtained by solving the schrodinger wave equation for the molecule since they involve the schrodinger equation as a two complex approximation methods are used to obtain the wave function for the molecular orbital the most common method in the linear combination of atomic orbital is lcao we know that the atomic orbitals are represented by the wave function xi let uh, let us consider two atomic orbitals represented by the wave function that is xi uh, a and xi b with a comparable energy combines to form two molecular orbital one is the bonding molecular orbital and the other is the anti bonding molecular orbitals the wave function for these two molecular orbitals can be obtained by the linear construction of the atomic orbital that is xi a and xi b that will be given as xi is equal to xi a plus xi b and xi anti bonding is xi a minus xi b the formation of the bonding molecular orbitals can be considered as the result of the constructive interference of the atoms atomic orbitals and the formation of the anti bonding molecular orbitals that can be in the result of the destructive interference of the atomic orbital the formation of two molecular orbitals form two oneness orbitals that only given in this picture okay now with this one the molecular uh, orbital diagram of hydrogen molecule is given here and the atomic orbital of hydrogen is oneness one so another oneness one if those two are combining you will get two molecules and those two molecules are in the anti bonding that is molecular orbitals of h2 is uh, two uh, electron that is sigma 1s2 uh, 1s2 whereas sigma star 1s is zero the electronic configuration the bond order is nb minus na by 2 which is equal to 2 minus 0 by 2 which is equal to 1 so the molecule has no unpaired electrons hence it is diamagnetic like the same we have the molecular orbital diagram of lithium molecule and lithium number is 2 the electronic configuration of lithium is a uh, lithium number is 3 the electronic configuration of the lithium is 1s2 2s1 the electronic configuration is sigma 1s2 sigma star 1s2 then you have the sigma 2s that is you have 2s and 2s and 2s are given here molecular orbitals so those two electrons are there and at the top it is empty so the bond order is nb minus na by 2 which is equal to 4 minus 2 by 2 which is equal to 1 and in this one also there is no unpaired electron so it is diamagnetic next you have the molecular orbital diagram of boron molecule 
and here the molecular formula is B2. The electronic configuration of boron atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. The electronic configuration of molecule is sigma 1s2, sigma star 1s2, sigma, 2, sigma 2s2, then a pi 2p y1 and pi 2p x1. Then the bond order is Nb minus Na by 2, which is equal to 6 minus 4 by 2, which is equal to 1. And in this half, you have two unpaired electron, so it is the paramagnetic. Okay. Then the remaining two more molecular orbital diagrams of carbon molecule as well as nitrogen are given here. And those things we can see in our next class. Okay. Or while you are coming to the uh, doubt clearing class, we can see that one. Clear? Okay. Now, uh, we studied up to this. The remaining we will see in our uh, Zoom class. Okay. So, we can uh, study this already I gave you in the form of a PDF, the question and answer. This two also, you can write it and you can uh, yeah, give it to us for the correction. Then only you will get the mark for the assignment. Okay. And the assignment is again the same. I am not ready to give you another one. These things alone, you have to write it in your notebook. Okay, ma. Thank you, children.